So before we start talking about axis, which can be very confusing if you've never seen it before, um, we need to determine what these like letters actually mean on the 12 lead EKG. So when you look at this, it's a real EKG, you see these like numbers and letters. This On this left side, you see one, two, and three. Here you see AVR, AVL, AVF, and then you see like V1 through V6. So what do these actually mean? So this image right here, is very helpful and there's an acronym that you can use to memorize this very easily. So what we're gonna do is first start with the V, the right side of the EKGs. Ignore the left half of the EKG for now. So link at the right side, you'll see V1 and V2 are septal, V3 and V4 are anterior, and V5 and V6 are lateral. V1, V2 is septal, V3, V4 is anterior, V5, V6 is lateral. Then if we go to the left side, we see one and AVL are lateral, and then if we look at the bottom left, we see two, three, and AVF are inferior. We can ignore AVR for now. So what we're doing is we're grouping these. So V1, V2, septal. V3, V4, anterior. V5, V6, lateral. One and AVL, lateral. And then two, three, and AVF, inferior. You see how I, see that? I say that? Two, three, AVF, that's a grouping of electrodes. It's a grouping of, of of 12 of like leads, you wanna say them together. Two, three, and AVF is inferior. There's an acronym called SALLI, S-A-L-L-I, that you can use to memorize this. S is V1 and V2, septal. A is anterior, V3, V4. The first L is lateral, V5, V6. One in AVL is lateral. It's technically called high lateral, which will make sense later. Um, so that's the other L. And then I is inferior, two, three, and AVF, so SALLI. So when we look at this, um, it doesn't have those helpful like acronyms, but we can go over it again. So just remember Sally and you'll be fine. So starting with the S and Sally, V1 and V2, this is looking at the septal portion of the heart, the septum. Then V3 and V4, this is A for anterior. So V3 and V4 are looking at the anterior portion of the heart. V5 and V6 is the first L, so that's lateral portion of the heart. And then one in AVL is also lateral. That's looking at the lateral portion of the heart. It's the high lateral portion of the heart. And then two, three AVF, I know they're not like directly next to each other, so it's kind of confusing how they're grouped, but just look at them. They're all fairly similar looking. So you can kind of uh, take a gander that they're looking at the heart from a similar angle. Two, three and AVF is inferior portion of the heart. So um, now we've talked about those. Uh, I want to explain the, you know, what this actually means. So V1 through V6, I talked about this earlier in my lead placement video. So I'm going to just back up here so it's a little bit easier to see me. So V1 and V6 is V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So we're literally putting those stickers on the heart. So it kind of makes sense that V1 and V2 are the septal area. This is roughly where my interventricular septum is in my heart. V3 and V4, this is roughly like the anterior portion of my heart, mostly like the left myocard or left ventricle area. Then over here, V5 and V6, this is the lateral portion of my heart. It's in the lateral side of my body. So that's V5 and V6. So that should make sense with that acronym. Um, then on the left side of the EKG, you have like this one in AVL, two, three AVF. Now those don't make a lot of sense because we didn't put those stickers on. So that whole left side of the EKG, those six leads you see there, those are basically taken from the limb leads. And when we start to explain axis, it'll make a little bit more sense, I hope. So. Keeping all that in mind, I know it's a lot. We're gonna talk about axis. So what actually is axis? So all axis means, it's gonna get really confusing, but just know this, axis is just the average direction of the electricity going through your heart. That's it. If you have a normal axis, that means that the direction of electricity coming from the top of your heart to the bottom of your heart is pretty normal, okay? So going from the top of your heart to the bottom of your heart is pretty normal. SA note down is normal. It should be like this. It should be like a nice little line. So when we look at this right here, look at this circle. It's hard to draw myself. So just look at this circle. Imagine you're looking at somebody, you're standing in front of them and you're looking at their heart. Imagine this is their heart. So let's say their SA note is right here. Just ignore the letters on this circle. Imagine the circle is their heart. The SA nodes up here, this is where the electricity is originating, and it's gonna go down towards the ventricles in this direction, from here to here, from top left to bottom right here. So the electricity is traveling from here to here. If 
the average of that electrical like amplitude or that pulse basically is within this area if that vector ends up in this area it's normal if it travels outside towards the right that's called a right axis deviation which i hope makes sense and if it travels more towards the left then that's a left axis deviation it shouldn't travel backwards so that would be an extreme axis deviation and that can happen so again SA node somewhere up here, electrical activity is going down towards the myocardium and the ventricles. It should end up somewhere in this direction. Think of it as an electrical vector. It should end up that direction. Okay, so this right here, you really need to almost like memorize it. And I know it's kind of challenging, but one right here is at zero degrees. So that's like straight off to the left there. We're talking about the patient's left. AVF is like straight down so that's basically the bottom and all of these numbers on this chart here you need to think about them as cameras so two right here is like the best camera it's got the best angle to look at the heart because it's basically looking up at the heart directly to where the electricity is coming so let me try to explain this your SA notes here i was saying how it pushes the electricity down kind of at this angle from here to here and it ends up in this normal qrs axis well, two is like a camera and it's looking up at the heart basically directly in line with that electrical vector. So when you're looking at it from two, two should give you a really good view of that electrical activity. I hope that makes sense. So again, two is a camera. It's looking up at the heart. The electrical activity is coming down directly at two if it's a normal heart. So if we go to this normal 12 lead and we look at two, ignore this first beat, that's just some artifact. If we look at two, this beat right here, this is like the perfect representation of a P, a QRS, and a T because it's looking directly at a normal vector of electricity coming down from a healthy heart. Well, AVL is not two. AVL is a camera like way off to the side and it's looking at the electrical vector going like past it. It's almost at a 90 degree angle to it. So instead of the electricity coming directly at it, it's like at a 90 degree angle to it. So you get like this weird down and up QRS and you may be like, well, why does it go down and up? Anytime an electrical vector is traveling at a camera, for our example, at two, if it's coming towards it, it's gonna be an upward deflection. If it's going away from the camera, it's gonna be a downward deflection. So let's think about two as a camera and AVR as a camera. AVR is basically 180 degrees opposite of two. So we look at two, we get this beautiful looking like P, Q, or S, T, like we said. But remember, AVR is like the opposite. It's right here. And the whole thing is upside down version of two. So AVR is here, two is here. The electricity is going away from AVR. So AVR is watching this electricity traveling away from it. So all the electricity that you see depicted in two, P, Q, or S, T, it's upside down in AVR because it's inverted. It's going away from it. P, Q, R, S, T. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, I understand it's kind of confusing. Try to just read over this a few times. Think about all of the leads on your 12 lead as a camera. Um, so let's now go to AVF. So AVF is directly next to two. It should look pretty similar to two. And three is a little bit off to the side, but it's pretty close to two. So two, three, and AVF are grouped together. That is the inferior portion of the heart. We talked about that. And now maybe you can understand why. Two, three, and AVF are looking at the inferior portion of the heart like cameras. So they're looking at the inferior myocardium. So if there's any changes in the inferior myocardium, those are gonna be the leads you look at to determine whether there's you know ischemia there or any changes. Like I said, two, three, and AVF are looking at the inferior portion of the heart. This kind of correlates it to the anatomy, which is great, but it also incorporates in 3D the V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6 that we talked about earlier. So these are all just different cameras and they're all just looking at the heart from different areas. Two is the best one to look at the rhythm typically because it's directly in line with the electricity coming down from the heart typically. So. I hope that the concept of axis makes sense. It's really hard to explain. If I explained it kind of confusing, I'm sorry, 
just remember that your leads are cameras and they're giving you different views of the heart. That's why we want 12 of them. Whenever we're curious about what's going on in the heart, we're not satisfied with just one lead, we need 12 of them. Um, so now that we kind of understand the concept of access, I'm gonna to try to get you to be able to calculate access in a fairly straightforward way.